Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I give you glory, awesome God. Let your name be magnified in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We worship you, O God. We exalt your name, King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no one like you, O God. Be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted, King of kings and the Lord of lords. We invite your presence this afternoon. Take over, my Father. Take over this session, O oh God. Have your way in us in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives in the name of Jesus. Ya tabashi kamande talabasi we exalt your name, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be unto you, Almighty God. I worship your name. We worship your name, we worship your name this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Come on, join us, Esther, join us to this afternoon as we worship God. Just go before the Lord and pray as we invite his presence in this service in the name of Jesus. Just join us as we pray in the name of Jesus as we invite the mighty hand of God to take over in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your name be glorified, O oh God. Be exalted, King of kings and the Lord of lords. Be magnified, O oh Lion of the tribe of Judah. Speak your word, O oh God. Speak your word unto us this afternoon, my Father that your will may be done, Baba, in our lives. We worship your name, O oh God. We exalt your name, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for this afternoon. Thank you, Father, for your mighty hand and your anointing. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yatabashika mandebo soturubo shikata. We exalt your name, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, Lord. Be magnified in this place in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified, O oh God, now and forever. Let your name be glorified, mighty Father. Let your anointing increase in this place. Let your hand be upon this service in the name of Jesus. Release your word to touch your people, Lord. Touch your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak your word unto us this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to our afternoon session. Welcome to this service in the name of Jesus. May God bless you for tuning in. And I'm inviting you to invite your friends, take your loved ones, call them to come and hear the word of God. Call them and come to come in the presence of the Lord. For there is something that the Lord wants to speak to them this afternoon. 
There is a word that is tailor-made for someone. Encourage your loved ones to join the life service as we are about to begin in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I welcome you to this service in Jesus' name. And before we begin the sermon, I would like to acknowledge and to thank the visionary of this great work, Minister Maslin Muvami, our mother, our founder. May God bless you, woman of God. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God this afternoon. I would also want to humble myself before the leadership of this great work. All the leaders, may God bless you, the admins, all the women of God who are behind the success of this great work, may God continue to bless you. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity this afternoon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Without further ado, let us get into the word of God. I am going to read from the book of Numbers, chapter number 14, verse number six. Numbers, chapter number 14, verse number six. And it reads, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephne, who were among those who had spied out the land to their clothes. Let us go to Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter number 14, verse number six. Joshua chapter number 14, verse number six. And it reads, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. Let's go to verse number 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, here I am this day, 85 years old. Verse number 11. Verse number 12, sorry. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said, hallelujah. And verse number 13 says, and Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh as an inheritance. Verse number 14, Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. May God bless the reading of his word this afternoon in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. The title of my message this afternoon is The Time Is Now, hallelujah. Write in the comment section and say the time is now. Ladies and gentlemen, the time that I am talking about is not someone else's time, but your time. It is your time, you who are listening, you are watching me at this moment. And the Lord has sent me with a word for you to tell you that your time is now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Allow me to take you back with this story. We all know this, the story of the 12 spies in Numbers chapter number 13. Moses sent out the 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan according to the Lord's instruction. And these men were a representative from the 12 tribes of Israel. So one person from each tribe was chosen to go and spy the land of Canaan and bring back a report so as to prepare Israel as they were about to go and possess Canaan. Moses wanted to have a picture. God wanted Moses to have a picture of the place that he had given unto them before they possessed it. So God wanted Israel to have a 
clear picture of where they were going and to prepare for what they would face when they enter Canaan. So the Bible says Moses obeyed God and selected 12 men to go and spy the land of Canaan. And amongst these 12 were Joshua and Caleb. And Caleb is the one that the spirit of God has placed upon my heart to speak on this afternoon. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us that Caleb was amongst the 12 who went to spy the land of Canaan. And the Bible says when they went to Canaan and when they got to Canaan, they saw the land and they saw what they saw in the land. And they all had an equal opportunity to see what they saw in the land. And the Bible says they came back to give a report. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see this scenario. Caleb saw the land that God was about to give him. And the Bible says when they came back with the testimony, when they came back to give a report to Moses and the council of Israel, the Bible says 10 men gave a negative report. We know the story. But the Bible also says two of the 12, who were Joshua and Caleb, silenced the people of Israel and said, though these people, what they are saying is true, but we have a different report from what they are saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see this. Caleb went to Canaan and saw with his eyes, and he saw the land that God wanted to give him. And in his heart, though there were hardships, though there were troubles, though there were giants that they saw, the children of Anak, the giants that they saw. But I want you to see that Caleb, when he captured it in his heart, when he captured it in his mind, he believed that God has a reason for sending us to such a place. Even though there are giants, even though this place is a... He saw the mountains, hallelujah. He saw the land of Canaan and he made the decision in his mind that against all odds, this is a land fit for possession. This is a land fit for us to live and to dwell in. This is the land where we are going to inherit no matter what. What am I saying this afternoon? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear something. We have so many of you who are listening to me right now, who have big dreams that they have dreamt. You have dreamt doing big things. You have seen great things in your dreams. Whenever you sleep and when you wake up, you always stand in awe at the things that you see in your dreams. And you always ask yourself, God, is it me who can possess these things? Some of you, see dreams that are big when you sleep. Some of you have big visions that the spirit of God is placed upon your heart. Some of you have big plans that are written down in your diaries. But when you look at that plan, when you see that vision, it intimidates you because of how big it is. It may intimidate you because of how great it may seem. But I want you to know, some of you who are listening to me have words, big words that have been spoken by various servants of God over and over. Words that has, have been confirmed. Some of you have prophecies that have been released upon your word, upon your lives by various servants of God. And those prophecies have, have been confirmed. But when you look at yourself, just like the 10 men who came and gave a negative report, they were looking at themselves and their capacity. And they were judging themselves and telling themselves that we can never possess that land because we do not have the capacity to face those giants, those sons of anarchy. And it's like you today in the present day, the one that I'm speaking to this afternoon, you look at yourself and you say, God, this 
dream is too big for me to achieve. This vision seems unattainable. This dream may seem too big, but I want to tell you that God has a reason for showing you those big dreams. He knows he has put it inside of you to be able to attain those dreams. He knows there is a wiring inside of you that is capable of attaining those dreams, that is capable of fulfilling that big vision oh glory be to Jesus and this afternoon ladies and gentlemen I want to draw your attention to Caleb I love the man Caleb because he refused to let people diminish what he had saw he refused to let people and their negativity diminish and kill the dream of God inside of him and this afternoon God has sent me child of God to tell you that whatever gets into your ears and whatever you allow your eyes to see, let it not diminish that which God has placed inside of you. Let it not kill the dream of God inside of you. Let it not destroy the mandate of God concerning your life. Some of you, God wants you to go out there and establish great work for him, but you are scared, right? now. When you look at yourself, you say, can I do it? Can I be able to do A, B, C, D as God is showing me? But he has sent me this afternoon as his servant to tell you that do not be afraid. He knows what he is talking about. Hallelujah. He knows the wiring inside of you and he knows you are well able to do it. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Caleb confessed with his mouth and he said it, that if God wants to give us that land, we are going to possess it. He was not like the 10 who spoke negatively, but he spoke positively. And because of his positive confession, the Bible said God released a promise upon Joshua and Caleb and said, because they have spoken uh, positively, they have believed in me as their God. I promise that, that land which they have seen, they shall take it. That land upon which their feet have trodden, they shall possess it. And this afternoon, I want to speak to you, child of God, that that dream which you are seeing, that big vision, that drive that you have, that which God is telling you to establish, that which God is telling you to do, that great project that is telling you to embark on, you so it in the dream, but for it to become a reality, you've got to believe it in your heart. You've got to believe that you can big that big, you can you can build that big house. You've got to believe it in your spirit that you can found that great work. You can be a pioneer of that great ministry. You have to believe it in your heart that you are able to do that great project. You are able to start that business and you are able to run it like a professional. We, it's not about your capital or your income. It's not about the surroundings. That is what Caleb decided to do and said, I'm not going to look at the surroundings. I'm not going to consider the state of affairs in Canada. I'm not going to be threatened by the chances of anarchy, the giants that we are seeing, but I'm going to keep my focus on the new and the honey that God promised. Oh, glory be to Jesus. And child of God, this afternoon, I have come to tell you, put you that your vision, let it be focused on the milk and honey. Let your vision be focused on the milk and honey. Don't look at your financial status. It's not about the money that you have in your account. It's not about your ability. But the Bible says, not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. It's about the spirit of God. That dream is achievable. That vision is achievable. Attainable. You can own that company, child of God. You can be uplifted. You can increase greatly. You can embark on anything that God is calling you to do, only if you can believe it in your heart that he is able to do it for you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Oh, glory be to Jesus. 
Oh, the word of God says Caleb. God promised Caleb because of his positive confession. And he promised Caleb and said he was going to possess that land. But you know what happened? It didn't happen there and then. Caleb and Joshua did not possess that land there and then. I have come to speak to you, children of God, this afternoon, that when God promises you something, when you have a big dream, when you have a big vision, and when you are believing God for something big, it doesn't mean that when God gives you a promise, he's doing it there and then. God might have these reasons for you to wait. He will be preparing you that so that when the, 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 the breakthrough is to come, when the dream is to be realized, you will be well equipped to fulfill it and you will be well equipped to run with it. So the Bible says Caleb was 40 years old when the promise of God came upon his life. He was 40 years old. And the Bible says the miracle only happened at 85 years old, meaning to say Caleb had to wait for 45 years for his dream to be realized. I'm about to start preaching this afternoon. Oh, glory be to Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm speaking to some people this afternoon. God has sent me to address a group of people this afternoon who say, God, it's been a long time since I had that dream. It's been a long time since that vision came. It's been a long time, Lord, since I established my business. It's been a long time, Lord, since I've been working for this company. It's been a long time, and I'm stuck at one position. It's been a long time, oh God, and my ministry is not rising the way I want it to rise. It's been a long time, oh God, since I started doing A, B, C, D, but nothing is coming. Nothing is changing. I'm stuck at one position, but God has sent me to encourage you, child of God, and to tell you that when God promises, there is a reason why he makes you wait. It doesn't mean it's going to happen there and then, but there is a process, and the Holy Spirit has instructed me to speak to you this afternoon to tell you that wait for the process. Caleb was able to wait for the process. He waited through the process. He waited until he possessed at 45, at 85. He waited for the 45 year period. And the Bible says he wholly waited upon the Lord. He was wholly devoted to the Lord God of Israel. Meaning to say he didn't waver from his belief in God because the promise was delaying. There are some people who are listening to me right now who are about to give up because the wait it seems to be too long. You've been praying to God for a child. You've been believing God for an upgrade at work. You've been believing God for a new house, a new job. You've been believing God to take you to the next level in your life. You've been believing God, but God has sent me to tell you, don't give up. That wait is worth it. There is a process. God is pruning you. God is preparing you for the breakthrough. God is preparing you to attain that which he wants you to attain. God is pruning you and placing you where he wants you to be placed. For he knows what you do not know. He sees what you do not see, child of God. And I'm here to speak to you. Don't give up because the wait seems too long, but continue on God. Continue believing him like Caleb. Caleb waited for 45 years. He neither waved nor turned, but he kept his trust in God. And he believed that my God promised. Hallelujah. Why did Caleb believe? Because he had seen the work that God had previously 
previously done in their lives. He knew that this same God is the one who parted the Red Sea for us to walk on dry ground. Caleb knew that when we needed water, this is the God who made water to come out through a rock. He knew that this is the God who made manna to fall when we needed it. So he knew that God would not lie. I'm here to speak to you, child of God. You saw your dream in a vision. You saw that dream whilst you were sleeping. It's been many years having the same dream over and over again. And in that dream, you are someone big. You know, sometimes when you get into prayer, there are some times when you start to pray and you start to feel that I am someone big. You start to feel that I can do all things. You start to feel that it is achievable. I'm here to tell you, child of God, that indeed it is achievable. I want you to know that the same God who was with you from the day that you were born, child of God, is the same God who's going to take you to that promise. Is the same God who's going to bring that dream into reality. It doesn't matter, but the fact that you saw it with your own eyes, the fact that the prophecy was spoken upon your life, the fact that the word was released upon your life. Oh, glorify God, because once there is a promise released by God, he does not falter or change. God does not go back against his word, but he watches over his word to perform it. And I'm here to assure you, child of God, that keep on waiting for the promise. The time will come. Keep on waiting for God to manifest his blessings upon your life. Oh, Caleb waited. He waited for 45 years and he remained true to God. Remain true to God during the wait, child of God. Remain true to God during the wait. Remain true. Serve him. Do that which we are doing for God. Pay your tithes. Give in his house. Oh, pray for the sick. Preach the word of God. Remain faithful throughout the waiting period. For but there is a reward that is waiting for you at the end of it all. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm happy because this story does not end there. Hallelujah. This story does not end in numbers, but it crosses over to Joshua. 45 years later, the Bible says the time came when the children of Israel had crossed over into Canaan, and the time came for them to be given their land, to be given their inheritance, the land that God had promised to give them. The time finally came for them to possess it. And I want you to know, child of God, that Caleb's weight was about to be rewarded. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Caleb's faithfulness was about to be rewarded. I'm happy because he speaks. When he speaks, he speaks and confesses that I waited wholeheartedly for the Lord. And I'm here to speak to you child of God, if you have been waiting wholeheartedly for the Lord, if you have been faithful despite the challenges of life, if you had be, have been faithful all this while, serving God, praying to God, and not departing from his presence, if you have been committed to God wholeheartedly, just like Caleb was, I want you to know that your time has come. I'm happy because Caleb's time finally came. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Caleb's hour finally arrived. His time of possession finally came after 45 years. But I am happy because when it came after 45 years, he was 85 years old and he confesses. The word of God says, Caleb confessed that I am still strong today at 45, at 85, as strong as I was when 
I was 40 years old when the promise was released, meaning to say that God, or oh, even throughout the wait, or oh, continued to give Caleb his strength, continued to give Caleb his health. And I decree and I declare in your life this afternoon, during that wait, may God continue to give you good health. May God continue to strengthen you. May God continue to give you good life and good health until you possess it. May God, I decree it this afternoon, that God is going to give you good life. He's going to give you good health. He's going to see you through the wait. And when your time comes to possess, you shall be as strong as Caleb was. Hallelujah. But this afternoon, I'm speaking to a few whose time and hour has come. Oh, there are a few that God has sent me to speak to, whose time has come. The long wait is over. God has sent me to release a special anointing right now that is going to touch some individuals who are watching me this afternoon. That anointing is going to grow, cause things to begin to happen in your life. God has sent me with a special anointing that is going to cause you to take your positions now. And that's why I have titled my message, The Time Is Now. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how long you have waited. You have waited for too long for that child. You have waited for too long for that breakthrough. You have waited for too long to step into your destiny. You have waited for too long to see the dream that you constantly have manifest. And I'm here to tell you, child of God, that your time is now. Some of you, your dream and your desire, what you've been believing God for, is to see your husband coming to church and giving his life to God. And I'm here to tell you, child of God, that your time is now. Some of you are believing God for financial breakthroughs. There are areas that you want God to release grace in your life so that things may begin to move in a certain way. But you've been waiting for a long time for God to do that. But I'm here to announce to you as a servant of God that because you have been faithful to God, because you have wholeheartedly followed the Lord your God like Caleb, your time has come. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Your time has arrived. Your hour is now. Your time of waiting has come to an end. And I'm happy because Caleb waited for 45 years. And when the time came for him to get the land, the Bible says Joshua and the elders of Israel were distributing land and the priests we, we, they were using the casting of lots to distribute the land. But the Bible says Caleb came out and he spoke out. Amen. He knew that his time had come, but what he knew was that even though his time is now, he needs to speak it out. He needs to claim it to have it. I'm here to tell you, child of God, the Bible says Caleb went to Joshua and said, remember what the Lord said concerning you and I back there in Kadesh Barnea. Remember what God said. You know what Caleb was thinking? This is just my assumption. The children of God, the other tribes, were being given land by casting of lots. So they would cast a lot, and wherever the lot fell, that's how they would be distributing the land. But Caleb at the back of his mind, I'm sure he knew that his possession was great. It was not the type that would he was supposed to be given by the casting of lots. So I'm just seeing Caleb waiting and looking at himself and telling himself inside that if I keep quiet, if I don't confess it, if I don't claim my inheritance. This man might give me the same portion of land by casting lots. They might give me a small portion by casting their lots. But he remembered what the Lord has said. And he went and reminded Joshua and said, remember what God spoke at Kadesh Barnea. Give me those mountains. Oh, glory be to Jesus. I'm here to speak to you this afternoon. God promised you a big dream. 
What God wants you to do is greater. That job that you saw in the dream, it was a very high post. Do not settle for less, child of God. Caleb refused to settle for less. And I'm here to tell you that even though your time has come, even though you are about to cross over into Canada, even though you are about to possess it, child of God, if you do not claim it, you might be given that which is not supposed to be yours. Remember, the devil does not want you to have anything good to your name. So you must claim it by speaking it out. Caleb was bold enough to speak out to Joshua. And he said, I want those mountains. I'm not about to be given some small piece of land by casting of lots. But I want what truly belongs to me. And I've come to challenge some people this afternoon to claim your possessions. Claim your inheritance. Remember what you saw. Remember the word of prophecy that came into your life. Remember what God promised you. He didn't promise you something small. Don't let your capacity make you settle for less. Caleb said, though I may be 85, or to other people, I may look old, but to God, I am not old. I am still able to possess those mountains. Child of God, I've come to tell you, uh, don't limit your uh, uh, capabilities uh, by looking at your capacity. Your capacity does not matter. What matters is what God promised you. What matters is where God wants to take you. Your time has come. Your time to possess that mountain has arrived. Your time to claim and to get your inheritance has come. But even though your time has arrived, child of God, you need to speak it out. And I'm inviting you this afternoon or to write even in the comment section and say I am claiming my possession and say give me those mountains. It might have been like 45 years in your life but God has sent me to announce to you that your time has arrived child of God. Your time has come child of God. You are about to be elevated by God. You are about to start and embark on that mega project and you shall see it prosper. God is about to elevate you at that job where you have been stuck at one level for a long time. God is about to give you that child that you've been believing him for. God is about to do a miracle in your life. Your time has came, Caleb. Your time has arrived, Caleb. You are now stepping into your promise. You are now getting into your promise. You are now stepping into your Canaan. You are about to possess the Hebron of your life. Caleb, despite the weight, he was able to possess. And God has sent me this afternoon to speak to those who are brokenhearted, who are saying, but God, I've been serving you. God, I've been praying. God, I've been giving and doing all that is right according to your word. But why me, oh God? Why this weight, oh God? Why this time which seems like 45 years, oh God? But the Holy Spirit is here this afternoon to give you, because your time has come. You are stepping into Canaan. You are possessing your possession. You are about to take the fair share of your inheritance. God has sent me this afternoon to release an anointing, to release an anointing that is going to cause things to begin to happen in your life, to release an anointing that is going to help you mini grow your ministry to where God wants it to go, to where God showed you in that vision. Oh, God has given me this anointing to release it to his children, an anointing that will take you to the next level of your life, an anointing that will take you to your Hebron, an anointing that to make you possess your mountain. Your mountain is waiting for you. Oh, claim it, child of God. Begin to speak and say, I claim my mountain. I 
take that which I saw with my eyes. I take which that which I saw and that which God promised me. Oh, glory be to Jesus. You are about to possess your possessions, not just for you. The Bible says Caleb possessed and he took over Hebron and it became his inheritance. They were not only his, but for his children and his descendants, the type of blessing, the type of breakthrough, the type of elevation that God is about to give you this afternoon. The anointing that God has given me to release upon your life is not only going to work in your life, but it's going to work in your children's lives. It's going to be passed on to your descendants. There shall be no more weeping in your life. There shall be no more sorrow in your household. All that which you've been believing God for, the time has come. Hallelujah. God has sent me to speak to a few people this afternoon, and I can feel the presence of God in this place. I can feel a heavy anointing in this place. God is about to elevate some people. There are some people whose hour is clocking right now. There are some people whose time has come right now. They are stepping into their canon, and they are possessing their mountains. But God is waiting for you to claim it. If Caleb had not claimed it, if Caleb had not reminded Joshua, or who knows, maybe Joshua would have given that place, would have given Hebron to someone else. But Caleb remembered what God has promised. And I have come to remind you what God showed you in the vision. Do not be dissuaded by the devil. Do not be dismayed at what you see. Your capacity does not matter. Or oh, just claim it, God will give it to you. Just claim it, that mountain belongs to you. Refuse to settle for less child of God. It doesn't matter how old you are. The Bible says Caleb was 85 when he possessed Hebron. It's never too late to receive your promises. It's never too late to receive your mountains. It's never too late for you to possess your inheritance. You are never too old or to achieve that which God intended you to achieve. You are never too old to possess your possessions. And this afternoon, I'm releasing an anointing right now. An anointing that is going to elevate you despite your age. An anointing that is going to cause things to happen all in a short space of time. God is going to shock some people who are watching me this afternoon. God is going to open doors that some of you are going to be shocked. God is going to surprise some people. God is going to surprise a few people who are here, who are listening to me this afternoon, because their time has come. I've come to tell you, child of God, believe God and his promises. Your time has come. Caleb's time came and he was able to possess Hebron. Caleb's time came after 45 years. Do not quit on God, child of God. Wait on God if your time has not yet come. Wait on God and trust the process in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Rita Labashiki Mondo Robosia Mahai Yanda Bashiko Toto Robosia Mane. Your time has come, child of God. That long wait is about to come to an end. God is about to do a good thing in your life. God is about to cause all things to fall into place. God is about to give you your inheritance. He's about to give you that which you have been believing him for for a long time. God is about to answer your prayer. Your time is now. It is now and not tomorrow. And I want you to believe God when he says your time is now. Believe the word of God when I say your time is now. And as we end this service, I want you to be in a celebration mode, child of God. I want you to celebrate your miracle, celebrate your breakthrough, celebrate your inheritance, and tell yourself that I am coming in. I am stepping into my inheritance. That long wait is over. 
If you have been waiting on God and saying, God, I don't know when to start this company. I have my papers registered, but I don't have the capacity. I'm telling you, go and do it now, child of God. Go and start that company now. Resources are about to come. You will see God do a new thing. You will see God do a mighty thing in the name of Jesus. Some of you are waiting and saying, God, first give me the resources and then I'll start. Some of you are saying, God, first give me a sign and then I'll start. But God saying, God is saying to you, oh, begin to move and I'll move with you. Begin to take the first step of faith, child of God. Whatever big dream that you saw, whatever big thing that you saw in that vision, that prophetic word that was released upon your life, that word of knowledge that you were given, oh, no, child of God, that push inside of you, that, 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 that push that you have to do great things, but you're saying, I don't have the capacity. I've come to release an anointing right now that will be able to push you. I'm here to tell you that move, child of God, claim it, it is yours. It's waiting for you to claim it. Once you begin to claim it, you will see it coming to you. Caleb just told Joshua, and the Bible says Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to him, and Caleb possessed Hebron for him and his children. And I'm here to speak to you. I'm encouraging you, child of God. Claim it. Claim that vision. Claim that big dream. Claim that position at work. Claim it and say, God, I have stood at this position in one place. I am tired of this failure. I am tired of this long wait. It's been like 45 years, but my time is now. And I want you to believe it this afternoon and confess it that God, I thank you because my time is now. I thank you because I'm one of those people you are talking about whose time is clocking now. And as I am ending this session, just allow me to pray and to release the anointing of God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing, oh God, that anointing that is going to make things move in your people's lives. I release this anointing in the name of Jesus, the anointing that is going to cause them to possess their inheritance. Oh, their time of possession is now. And Lord, I release this anointing, oh God, that is going to accelerate things in their lives. An anointing that is going to push their paperwork. An anointing that is going to cause their papers to be signed. An anointing that is going to cause all things to fall in place. An anointing of elevation, oh God. Anoint your people. You are touching your people right now. There are people that God is touching right now. There are individuals that God is visiting right now. God is putting order in some people's lives. Some of you have been stuck at one place for a long time, but progress is about to come your way. You are about to see things move in your life. You are about to see breakthroughs coming your way. You are about to celebrate. God is going to surprise you. I release this anointing right now. The anointing of elevation. The anointing of progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to Jesus. I see God touching some people right now. I see God visiting some people right now. There are people that God is raising up. There are people that God is taking to the next level in their life. There are some of you who are going to testify because of this session in the name of Jesus. There are people who are going to celebrate in the name of Jesus. God is about to shock you. God is about to move you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, receive this anointing child of God. Receive the anointing which is going to cause you to see things working for you. Your time has arrived. Your time is now and things are about to move for you. That long wait is over. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank God this afternoon for his mighty word. And I pray that the Lord will do that which he wants to do in your life. Believe in his word and you will see things working and moving for the good in your life. May God bless you this afternoon. 
May God anoint you and may God push you forward. Your time has come and never doubt it. As we are leaving this session, as you are going back home, as you are going to be going about your business, just begin to move, just begin to plan your things, begin to see yourself growing and establishing that which you want to establish. And I tell you that which you saw with your eyes is about to become a reality. May God richly bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.